Hello and welcome to lesson two, uh, how to play the uh, chromatic button accordion and this is the B system. Uh, in the first video I showed you how to uh, uh, get strapped into the instrument and to play a one chord song which was Frere Jacquet and I hope you've gotten okay with that. Uh, in today's lesson we're going to sort of tie up a few loose ends and we're going to learn a tune that has two chords in it and the name of this tune is Bobby Shafto. It's probably worth mentioning that if you are a bit scared of reading music and uh, you can't understand it at all, uh, on my website, which is www.daddylongles.com, the address on your screen now, uh, you can download uh, some basic music theory information sheets which really help you uh, with this uh, problem. Um, you'll find those in the music theory section of the, of the website. Uh, if you print them out, I think it's about 11 or 12 pages, and I go through it really, really sort of uh, kind of baby steps, if you like, and you should find that you won't have any problem with that. But I will help you as we go through the videos in any case. Now, the name of this instrument is the chromatic button accordion, and perhaps that needs a little bit of explanation. Chromatic means playing every single note. So if I start on this note here, which is a G, um, and... I go to this one, G sharp, and this one A, and A sharp, and B, C, C sharp, D. I'm playing chromatically. And so, um, to help you understand this, I've recorded a separate video this morning, uh, which you might want to look at, uh, which kind of explains how the notes are laid out, and I compare it with a piano keyboard. So chromatic means that uh, you play every single note. If you're on a, a piano keyboard, you play every note uh, from the left to the right as you go. So on this particular instrument, if you zigzag across any three rows, or any three adjacent rows, like that. So let's try that on rows four, three, and two. Let's do it on rows um, five, four, and three. So it, it kind of works in a kind of a forward slash kind of angle like that, going across. And I say any three adjacent rows will give you that uh, chromatic scale. So basically, you've got your keyboard, you've got your piano keyboard, and you've kind of folded it up into a zigzag so you can cram all those notes in that small area. But as I say, have a look at that other video. Uh, that will uh, really help to explain it because I, I show you the piano keyboard and this keyboard at the same time. Like I said in the first video, um, white buttons on this instrument correspond to white notes on the keyboard, piano keyboard, and the black buttons on here correspond to black notes on a piano keyboard. Um, if I play this note here, this is a note C. I'm just going to show you the major scale of C uh, that most of our first tunes are based on. Notice it's all white notes. And the notes were C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And there it is, descending. We're going to learn this tune, Bobby Shafto, today. And I picked this tune because, it, again, it's a pretty famous tune. It's fairly easy. And we're going to make a bit of a, a progression today from playing a song that's got one chord, like Frere Jacquet, to this one, which has two chords to accompany it. So we're going to be dealing with two chords on our left hand. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's just sort out the right hand uh, and look at the notes we're going to use in the tune. You'll need to go to the second page of the tune and you'll see there's a little chart that says notes used in this tune as found on this instrument, the Black Diamond, uh, 60 bass, B system chromatic button accordion to give it its full name. And um, you need to remember that this is row one on the outside, row two, row three and row four. We're going to use the notes on row four today. A button one is the one nearest the chin end, okay, so you get your bearings in that way. So, looking at that chart, let's just identify the notes we're going to play in the tune. This is not the actual tune itself. Uh, like I said before, this is kind of the ingredients to bake the cake. Uh, the lowest note in the tune is a G, 
and that's this note here. That's actually the lowest note on this instrument, lowest sounding note, okay? And that is found on row two, button one. Okay, the next highest note in the tune is this one, which is B, which is row one, button two. And the next highest is C, which is row three, button two. And those three notes are found uh, on or under ledger line. So the G is found underneath the second ledger line on the music. And the, the ledger lines are those extra little lines just tucked underneath the stave just to accommodate those lower notes. And we can also have ledger lines above the stave. We haven't got that far yet. Uh, the B is under the first ledger line underneath the stave and the C is on the first ledger line underneath the stave. So G, B, C. Then we've got D, which is uh, row one, button three. That note is just tucked in the space, if you like, just underneath the first line of the actual stave. Just to remind you that when I talk about the stave, I'm talking about those five parallel lines, the kind of shelves for putting the notes on. So uh, we then have E, which is actually on the first line, or the bottom line of the stave. Uh, e is row two, button four. Now, F is quite special in this tune. Uh, you find it on the stave in the first space, that's in the, in the space flat between the first two lines. We're going to play this note in two places. We're going to find it on um, row four, button four. And we're also going to find it, and you probably see the button going down, because it's linked. We're also going to find it on row one, button four. So it's row one, button four, and row four, button four. Now the reason we're going to play it in two different places is just for convenience. It's actually going to be more comfortable uh, at certain points in the tune to play it on row four, and in certain points in the tune it's more comfortable to play it on row one. And that's a, a really handy thing about this instrument. You may remember that I said uh, notes on row one are duplicated on row four, notes on row two are duplicated on row five. Okay, so that's why you see two buttons go down uh, sometimes. Obviously, you don't see two buttons go down if you play in the middle row because that row is not duplicated anywhere. And the other note um, is the G, which is an octave above the first G I showed you. It's on the stage, it's on the second line up. And it's row two, button five. So that was the lowest G, and there's the, the, the higher G. And they are an octave apart, or eight notes apart, if you like. So, in order, let's just play those notes from lowest to highest. This is not the tune, remember, just the notes we're going to use. And it's as well to be able to identify them uh, so that you uh, can find them quickly. I mean, they are labelled on the sheet. I have labelled the, the names of the notes. Maybe that's a good idea, maybe it's a bad idea, but you do well to remember, learn these notes uh, so that you can um, read the music. So lowest is G, and then B, C, D, E, F, row four, button four, or row one, button four. Handy that they're both button four, isn't it? And we've got G, which is there, so lowest to highest. And those are the notes that we use in the actual tune. So at the top of the first page of this tune, it says that it's a simple two chord song in the key of C major. Um, I will explain about key signatures a little bit later on. I don't want to worry you too much at the moment. Uh, just suffice to say that all the notes in this tune that we're going to play are going to be on white buttons. Um, you're going to count in fours. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's a four beats in each bar. We'll talk about that left hand accompaniment a little bit later on. Let's really concentrate on just learning the tune to start with. So on the first stave it says pull bellows out. In other words, as you play you're going to be pulling the bellows out uh, to allow air uh, into the instrument and so that the reeds inside sound, so the notes sound. Now I'm going to just say open your bellows slightly, use your air button. And that means that when you come back at the same amount 
you've just got a little bit of leeway, a little bit of air left. You, otherwise, you may find you shut the bellows completely on the way back, and of course, if they're shut completely, you won't get any sound. So just give yourself a little bit of a margin of error, a little bit of leeway, pull the bellows out slightly, a little nudge on the air button, about that much if you can see that, and then you're, you're good to go. Um, right, the left hand chords are written in bold type, C, G, C, G, C, G. As I say, don't worry about those at the moment. Now we're not going to use the thumb in this tune, I've decided it's easier to use fingers at one, two, three and four and not use the thumb. Now if you look at the internet, look at lots of players of chromatic bass and accordions, some use the thumb and the fingers, some only use fingers. Uh, I do a kind of a mix, mixture of both and this particular tune I'm not going to use the thumb, in fact I'm going to tuck it behind uh, the right hand keyboard here to make myself feel comfortable. You can have, it, can have it sort of floating free if you like, if that works for you that's fine. Well, I'm going to tuck it behind the right hand keyboard here. So I'm not going to use the thumb in this particular tune. So my first note, C, index finger, uh, pulling out, and I've actually got three of those. So the next note is F, and it's got an asterisk underneath it. Uh, that's because um, if you look at the chart on the right hand side, you'll see that when I want you to play the F on the fourth row, I put an asterisk underneath it. So it's this F, row four, button four, and finger number two, uh, middle finger of your hand. Okay, and then we've got E, okay, so we're going to go over to row two, button four, and then we've got the note G, back to the E, and back down to our C again. Let's just close our bellows up a little bit, open them up just a tad so we're in the starting position, and let's play those first uh, two bars of music, those first eight notes. Pulling out all the wires we go, uh, and the fingers we use were one, two, three, and four. Okay, let's close up a little bit, I'll show you that again. Very familiar tune, isn't it? Now, all those notes are crotchets, they're all one beat notes, so Simple counting is, and you can see it underneath, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? And you have played the first two bars of music, or the right hand anyway. Now, what's nice is we're going to use the same pattern, just on different buttons and on different rows. So look at bar three, it starts on that G, that's the lowest note of the tune, row two, button one, can I start on this note? Got three of those, we're pushing the bellows in, so sort of coming back if you like. Three of those, then you've got C, which is uh, row three, button two. And then we've got uh, B, which is row one, button uh, two. And then we've got D, row one, button three. Back to the B, down to the G. Now look at that, I'll pull the bellows out there, play that again. Watch the pattern of fingers. So compare the pattern of buttons. Uh, here's the first two bars. Now look. Did you see we went from there to there, up to there, back to there. So that's one kind of pattern. And then this pattern exactly the same, just on uh, different rows. So that's really handy, isn't it? Uh, that's the nice thing about this instrument, it's very, very pattern based. So we've got our first stave of music, our first line of music, if you like, and those four bars, and they're all crotches, as I've listened to, I'll count, count you on the four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Pushing in, now on the next stave, um, the first two bars are the same as the first two bars on the first stave, so it just starts again, okay pulling the bellows out, so when we get to stave two bar three and um, we've got this bit that goes um, OK, 
Okay, now notice that time when we play the F, we're doing it on row one because it's convenient, isn't it, to, to have it there. Okay, we have in notes there D, F, D, B. Uh, D is row one, button three. F in this case, row one, button four. And when we get to the B, row one, button two. And then we come to the C. And we have two Cs. The first is a minim, or a two beat note. So it lasts the whole of beat one and the whole of beat two. And we have a crotchet, which, which lasts for one beat, beat three. And on the fourth beat of the bar, there is a crotchet rest. That's a one beat period of silence. Okay, so let's have a look and have a listen to those first two staves, those first eight bars. And I'll count you in, in case you want to play along with me. I'll do it nice and slowly. So starting position, bellows closed, open them slightly with the air button, and you're ready to go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, that sounds pretty good. That's a very familiar tune, isn't it? Right, let's go to stave three now, move on. And we are going to play a nice easy pattern here. So the notes are E, G, E, okay? Those notes are on row two, and C on row three. And notice, when you come to the E at the end of the second bar there, it's a minim, the head of the note is not filled in. So it lasts for two beats, comes in on beat three, lasts for the whole of beat three and beat four as well. So timing wise, you've got counting underneath. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the timing is the same on the next two bars, but the notes are different. All on row one. And notice this time we're going to do the F on row one, not on row four, uh, just like before. So we've got. Notes are D, F, D, B, D, F, D. Now the D is uh, button three. The, the F is button four. Back to the D. B is button two. Okay. And then on the next and final stave, uh, the first two bars of this stave are the same as the first two bars of the previous stave. And then the last two bars of that stave, the last two bars of the tune, are exactly the same as the last two bars of stave two. So you have. So let's play the second half of the tune now. So we're going to close our bellows, open them slightly. So we're going to play uh, stave three, stave four. Two, three, four. And that is the complete tune. Let's play the whole tune now together. Do it nice and slowly from the beginning. And I'm going to count you in. Make sure you get your bellows in the right position. Closed. Open them slightly. I'm going to count you in the four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And that's a really nice little tune to play and good practice at using your fingers um, correctly. As I said in the first uh, lesson, don't get tempted to do it all with one finger. You know, get using that right hand properly and you'll be glad you did, promise you. Now the right hand fingering I've come up with, um, 
it works for me. It may not work for you, you may want to use your thumb, you may want to come up with your own kind of strategy uh, for your right hand and that's absolutely fine. If it's logical for you and it works, that's absolutely fine. This is only my suggestion. Let's have a little word about dynamics. Now, this is a very dynamic instrument. I'm not playing it very dynamically at the moment. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it means it can go very loud and very soft. The piano is a, a touch sensitive instrument. I mean, to say, the harder you hit the keys, the, the, the louder it sounds. But this instrument, it doesn't matter how hard you press these keys, uh, it doesn't make any difference to the volume. The changes of volume or the dynamics in this instrument come from the bellows and your use of them. So if you pull hard as you play, it'll be really loud like this. Have a listen. Okay, I'm really pulling quite hard then. Obviously as you pull hard, the bellows open quite a lot. Now I'm going to play the next two bars pushing in but just not too hard. Have a listen to the difference. pushing very gently there. So the changes of volume or the dynamics or the expression come about with how, uh, how much pressure you exert on the bellows. You might want to experiment with that. Don't worry about that for the moment. It's not an important thing. It's something you can, you can worry about at a later date. So having sorted out the right hand tune, let's um, complete our uh, process by adding in the left hand. We're going to add in the chords, uh, and make it a really complete sounding uh, piece of music. So we're in the key of C, so we're pretty obviously going to be using our C bass note, which is found on the dimple, and our C major chord, which is diagonally above that. Right, so there you can see uh, the whole of the left hand side. Um, this is our bass side, it's going to give us our accompaniment or our backing if you like. This kind of a bass is called a stradella bass, same as you have on a piano accordion. And we're going to just find that C bass. There it is. It's on the, I can feel it. I'm not looking at it. I can feel it. It's got a little dimple, a little indentation. And it's on row uh, four, right in the middle there. And if I press that button, pull the bellows there, that's my C bass. That's my single bass note of C. And the C major chord that goes with it is diagonally above that on row three. So I have. Umpa. Notice I use my ring finger. You can see my wedding ring is on that finger. Finger, uh, finger number three, and the middle finger, finger number two, is used on the chord. So, ring finger on the bass note, middle finger, finger two on the chord. Now the other chord I want is G, and there's my G bass just above and my G major chord diagonally above that. So they're kind of next door neighbours, which is really useful, isn't it? So we've got the C bass note and the C major chord and the G bass note and the G major chord. Really close to each other, nice and convenient. So at the end of stage two, rather than going um par, um, I've told you to play the chord and the bass note together, which works really well at that point. So here's the left hand accompaniment to the tune uh, without the right hand. So I'm going to count you with the four. Bellows closed, slightly open. Here we go, one, two, three, four. So C, 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 G, 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 C, 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 G, G, C, 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 G, 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 C. C, 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 G, G, C, C. And notice there how I played the C bass note and the C major chord together uh, to finish up stave two and stave four. So what you have there is the bass note on beat one and beat three and the major chord on beat two and beat four. And when we get to the end of stave two, you play the bass note and the major chord together on beats one and three, and you do that on the final bar of the piece, that fourth bar of stave four. So let's put it all together now. Okay, play the whole thing together, left hand and right hand, and this is what it sounds like. And if you feel like you've practiced it enough, then please do play along with me. So one, 
two, three, four. <laughs> I'll uh, catch you in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And that is Bobby Shafto. Excellent little tune to play. And you're now playing a tune, if you can do this, that's got two chords in it, and you definitely made some progress from lesson one. So there we are, that is the end of lesson two. Um, I hope you're getting on okay, and I'll see you in lesson three.